Today I wanted to give a review and comparison of three different mountaineering boots that I picked up when I was looking for a new boot. Um, so we got three here. We got the uh, La Sportiva Trango Tech synthetic version. There's also a leather version of these guys. We got the La Sportiva Equilibrium or Equilibrium uh, LT. So this is the leather version. There's also a synthetic of this guy. And then the Scarpa Charmeau. Uh, not sure if that's pronounced correctly. I'll call this guy the Scarpa. Um, so let's get into it. We'll start first with just the design of these guys, looking first at the weight. So for the Trango, we got about 675 grams. And what is that and compared to everything else? Well, I compared everything to my hiking boot, which is the Loa Renegade GTX Wide. Um, and this guy came in at 668 grams per boot. Um, and so the Trango is just a little heavier at 675. So it's a really lightweight mountaineering boot. And when you're in the mountains, weight matters for sure. So that's a big plus for this guy. Uh, starting at the lightest and going to the heaviest, going up a little bit of, uh, in weight, we got the Equilibrium, which is 760 grams. So about 100 grams heavier between these two guys. And then going up about uh, 60 grams from there, we got the Scarpa, which is at 825 grams. So this is the heaviest of the two. I mean, you're, you're well over 100 grams heavier than this guy um, and with the Scarpa boot. So lightest weight, heaviest weight, um, and then sort of the middle ground here. And that's kind of a theme we'll see throughout. Lightweight, heavyweight, middle ground. Um, switching to just talking about the bottom up, we'll start with the outsole and midsole of these guys. So they all got a couple things in common. Um, they all have heel welts um, that are going to accommodate uh, semi-automatic crampons. No toe welts on any of these guys, so you're going to need semi-autos to, to get those uh, crampons attached. They also all have Vibram uh, outsoles and they're all also resolable. So if they do last long enough for you to wear all the way through the outsole, uh, you're going to be able to resole each and every one and, and start from start from scratch again. Uh, where they differ is definitely the stiffest the stiffness between them. So the Trango, I mean, super super flexible. This is pretty much a, a hiking boot with with you know crampon compatibility. So really flexible, um, gonna behave a lot like your hiking boot when you're out trekking around. Um, and again, the, the equilibrium is the middle ground. So we got a little bit stiffer, maybe a three quarter shank in there, um, but definitely stiffer than the Trango. And then the step up from that, which is the full shank, is the Scarpa boot. So you know, you're going to be able to take this guy on some, some moderate climbs, you know, deal with a little bit of ice and snow, maybe a little bit uh, more technical when you get to the equilibrium. Um, they're going to be able to do some things on ice that these guys can't, probably still wouldn't want to ice climb with these, take them much over 40, 50 degree slopes or something like that. And then these guys... Uh, you're going to be able to do whatever you want with them. Maybe not ice climb. I'm not an expert mountaineer and I'm not an ice climber, um, but these are definitely going to be your beefiest, burliest boots for your, your toughest climbs that you got out there. Um, so that's the outsole. Let's go up from there and talk about the uppers. So the Trango has this polyurethane or plastic wrap throughout, and you'll notice that's on all three of these guys. They all have the wrap that's going to protect you from rocks and uh, you know tree roots or whatever can stab into the side of your boot or you know if you're out climbing and you want to uh, really press the side of your boot into the the climb uh, those are going to protect uh, the bottom they're also going to give you some added benefit of water protection or, or you know waterproofness uh, these are all plastic compounds so they're not going to be um, they're going to be impervious to water. So that's a benefit. Um, 
The thing about the trangos is that the the wrap does not go up as high as maybe like the equilibrium and definitely not the scarpa. So um, I've read online that these may be a little bit more prone to tearing, especially in the synthetic uh, textiles up here. If you really catch a rock well, you can tear that and once you do that, you know, your waterproofness is gone and um, your boot is, is kind of shot after that. So durability was definitely something that I read online that these guys may have an issue with. Um, that could be one out of a thousand boots um, has a durability issue. Somebody hits a rock just right, but you just never know. So um, that's something to note when you're looking at the Trangos. Um, Maybe a little bit more durable is what you get with the Equilibrium. You get this uh, New Buck Leather, which I've had really good luck. I mean, these are four or five years old, and the New Buck is still looking good on my Loas. Um, so hoping for the same here with the Trangos. Um, you can see I've taken these guys out. i probably put 50, 50, 50 or so miles on these. Um, you know, you can see a little where the, um, where my, Micro spikes and snowshoes and crampons have been rubbing a little, but all in all, these are looking really good thus far. So happy with that. And these are going to hopefully be maybe a little bit more durable than that synthetic that you get with the Trangos. Um, and then finally, with the Scarpa, I mean, there's not much to say about this other than this guy just looks burly. Like, um, you got a really tight weave textile here. You got a high... Uh, rubberized wrap that's actually going to give you some good some good traction some good friction if you really want to shove that against rock um, and then you got this upper here which is really thick just this guy just screams like tough climb for me it's it's gonna take anything you throw at it uh, just noticeably more burly than these guys um, so if you're looking for something that's gonna go the distance something that's just gonna last um, the, the Scarpas might be for you, but they're also the stiffest, the stiffest, excuse me, and they're also the heaviest. So you, you win some, you lose some a little bit there, um, but definitely going to be a durable system. Um, going from the uppers to the actual lacing of these boots, the Trangos, pretty simple lacing, to be honest. You only got, you know, this, this strap is held on always. Um, so you could undo it if you wanted to sort of low top it, um, but then you really only got one hook that you gotta you gotta clip into there. And so these are gonna be like mid cut. I guess these are boot cut, but they're definitely on the lower side of boot cut, um, and they're really meant for that sort of you know chill, sort of low angle mountaineering type adventure that you're going on. Um, but they do have a really comfortable tongue. The, the tongue is very plush and padded. I noticed that when I was wearing these guys around. So that's a big benefit of these guys. The, the lacing system is really good on these. Um, it, you know, there's no bunching. The tongue is comfortable. It just, you know, it doesn't go up super high. So you wouldn't get maybe the support that you might get with the Scarpa, you know. Um, and then the equilibrium, like I said, it's the middle ground. So it's going to be higher than the Trango. You got three different hooks you can hook into here, so you're going to get maybe a little more locked in feel than you would get with the Trango. Um, but I did notice that there's not a lot of padding in the tongue, and there is definitely some bunching. I'm, I'm not sure how this uh, tongue was designed, but there's definitely some bunching that occurs when you're when you're tightening these up. Um, and when I, when I was wearing them around, I was worried because I was getting some some pressure points in the front of my shin, but, but that has gone away. So these guys have, have loosened up for me a little and they're a little more, a little more comfortable now. Um, but when I first put them on, I was worried about some shin banging, um, but that's, that's gone away. So, so really comfortable, good lacing system, um, no complaints there. And then the Scarpa is just a step up from that. It's gonna be your highest lacing system, your most amount of support. Um, it also has these, um, the lace locks here on the side. These two do not have lace locks as far as I can tell, um, but good lace locks on the Scarpa and, um, and so that's going to hold those in place and 
you know, I've gotten around that with this guy, just tie a surgeon's knot and that holds the laces in place, but it's nice that the guys at Scarpa uh, included that within the design. Um, and one thing I, I also forgot to mention, uh, which let's rewind just a little bit. So when we're talking about the outsoles of these three shoes, I wanted to highlight one thing that I thought was, was really, was really cool. Um, and that is the equilibrium outsole. Um, and these giant heel lugs that are on this shoe, I mean, these are eight and 10 millimeter heel lugs um, that I thought was a big design benefit because these, in my mind, are really gonna grab onto the snow, hook in there when you're down, when you're walking downhill and really keep you from slipping as opposed to something like, a, like the Trango or also the Scarpa where, um, you know, you get some lug, these are like four or five millimeters, but you don't get that huge cup that you get with the uh, equilibrium. So that's a big benefit that I, that I wanted to go back and, and highlight with the equilibrium as well. So we talked about outsoles, we hit on it twice. We talked about uppers, we talked about the lacing system. Let's talk about just general aesthetics. I mean, you can see these guys looking here, or sitting here, um, but let's talk about style. So. Trangos are basically simple, they're pretty, um, but they're hiking boots that have just been made into a mountaineering boot. They look like a hiking boot, they feel like a hiking boot. Um, if that's your style, if you want to go more discreet, the Trangos might be for you. They're, they're a good looking boot, no doubt, but they're definitely simple. Um, the Equilibrium, these are definitely different. Um, sharp lines all throughout, modern sort of design, really uh, standing out, honeycomb all along the edge here. These are good looking boots. Um, when I look at them, I think the word that comes to mind is just mean. These boots just look mean when you're wearing them. They just look like they mean business and uh, they're, they're ready for anything. So these are a good looking boot, but they're definitely a little bit more flashy than what you would get with the Trango. And then the Scarpa, I mean, even just holding this boot, but this thing just screams durability, just screams hard work. Um, it just, it's just going to be a tough boot, and it has that look to it. It's got a good look to it, but it definitely, um, it's just a tough looking boot. If, you know, you see somebody walking up the mountain and this guy, you're like, oh, that guy's going to go do some serious stuff. Um, that's just the general, the general look of these, of this boot. All three good looking boots, um, but definitely different in the way they look and different in the way they perform. Um, and speaking of performance, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about fit. That's really the most important thing that you can't get when you're just looking at these guys online. So that's why I'm here to, to, to tell you about the fit. So I wear, uh, my... Lower Renegades, these are the wide versions, so I have wide feet. Um, I like a lot of room for my toes to splay out. Um, that's just the way I roll. I have the Lower Renegades in size 11. I also have the Ultra Lone Peak 5s um, in a size 10. So, you know, a little bit different there, but the Lone Peaks just have a huge toe box area. So, size 11 Loas or size 10 um, Lone Peaks, and that equated to a size 44 and a half, 44 and a half, and 44. And I'll tell you right now, this I wish I would have gotten a uh, 45, half size bigger. This I wish I would have gotten a whole size bigger, a 45. And this guy is just the right size, 44 and a half was good with this one. But if you're looking at these two, this guy runs smaller, a half size smaller than this one. So take that into consideration. Um, when we're talking about the fit of this guy, one thing I noticed when I first put it on was that the heel just felt really high on this guy, like I was walking in high heels. Um, and it felt a little unstable, which, which was a little bit odd to me. It doesn't look like it would have a high heel, but you're just sitting up a little bit higher than, than you might expect in these, in these boots. Um, I also noticed that the toe box was a little bit narrow and a little bit low. I like a lot of room in my toe box personally, so that could just be me. And that's why I would really go a half size higher on these guys if you're looking at these two, because you 
want or I want the room in the toe box and this this was definitely a performance fit kind of toe box so it was definitely tighter uh, and I like a lot of room or else my toes just get kind of claustrophobic so um, so that's the toe I mentioned that the tongue itself is really comfortable that was a big that was a big uh, bright spot for this guy um, the, the whole shin area was really comfortable and then in terms of arch I like sort of a low to moderate arch I wear uh, super feet blacks or super feet um, you know the low version of super feet so if you wear the same you might find these guys have a little bit more arch than you want but it's still I would say a moderate arch it's not a high arch but um, you can definitely feel it um, these guys on the other hand the equilibrium definitely a lower to moderate arch so less of an arch in the equilibrium which these guys you know just they checked all the boxes for me um, the low to moderate arch just fit perfectly also the toe box this definitely is a plus big plus um, wide and also high plenty of room in here even when I'm wearing multiple layers of socks you know a liner sock and a, and a mountaineering sock uh, a thick sock these guys fit really well in terms of the toe box I don't feel like I'm crunched in any way also felt like they had a little bit wider midfoot some shoes I feel like I'm falling off at the arch um, not with these guys this one was very close to falling off but uh, but it was okay but this guy had plenty of room um, in that midfoot area um, and then I also kind of touched on sort of the downsides of this boot which is the minimal padding that you get in the tongue and then and then another thing is the heel tends to be a little bit performance they would call it you know it's tighter I can definitely feel some pressure points um, I've been dealing with a little bit of blisters um, just breaking these guys in so that's been a little bit you know of a downside um, so if you have if you have notoriously large heels you know I guess you would know something like that uh, these may not be the boots for you but um, I'm breaking them in and I still like them um, just something to keep in mind as, as you're thinking about which of these maybe to, to think about picking up um, and then the Scarpas again these were neat for me were too small I should have gotten a full size bigger so these are 44s I should have went to a 45 uh, and you know I've read online and, and it's also been my experience that even with the size the toe box is still very low it felt like I couldn't even raise my toes at all um, so that's definitely, you know, that's a downside for me. I like a lot of room in the toes. Um, that could be alleviated by going at a size or half size up, but, um, definitely was, was different between those three. Um, and then also the, in terms of arch support, these had the least amount of arch support out of all three. So if you don't have an arch, if you like minimal arch support, these could be for you. Um, but the one thing I also noticed, and it's not surprising, is that these definitely change the way you walk. They change your gait. You're going to be clomping around in these for sure as you're walking around, um, as opposed to these guys where you have some flexibility to maintain your normal way of walking. Um, with the higher uh, shin area, you definitely have a locked-in feel. Uh, I felt really secure when I was wearing these boots and the, the heel on these guys is very plush, very thick and padded and it just felt like I was, like the boot was, was just hugging my foot. So very comfortable in the heel, probably think about maybe going a half size or a full size up to, to accommodate your toes. That's assuming that, you know, you're wearing a similar shoe to what I'm wearing. Everybody's feet are different, but... Uh, that's that's been my experience um i also read online that scarpas are generally for wide feet and i have wide feet but i found that the las portivas fit well as well so uh, if you have wide feet and you're worried you know maybe you know don't be so worried maybe give las portivas a try if if if, if this uh if any of their features stand out to you um i found that both of them were both great fitting boots. This one could have gone a half size up, but still really good fitting boots. This one as well, great fitting boot. Um, really can't go wrong with, with any of those, uh, in my opinion, in terms of fit. So that's a general review. Um,
let's just go over things quickly. Um, to summarize, when we're looking at each boot, they all have their pluses and minuses. The big plus of the Trango is going to be the weight. Um, you're going to save a lot of weight and therefore a lot of energy wearing this boot. Um, and that's that's really the benefit. You're basically getting a hiker with heel welts, so you can you can throw crampons on it. It's going to be good for easy to moderate climbs. Um, you know, nothing too steep, but uh, you're going to save a lot of energy and be packing really light as you're going. Um, the downside is is you know you're limited in terms of what you can do in this in this boot, and then I think when you're saving all that weight, you may also be sacrificing a little bit of durability with this guy. When when you're talking about a $250 boot, you know, you want it to last a long time. So those are all things to consider when you're thinking about the Trango. Uh, when we're talking about the Scarpa, this guy is gonna be the heaviest of the bunch, so that's its biggest downside. You're gonna use a lot of energy walking around in this guy. Um, but it's also gonna be able to take you anywhere you wanna go. You're gonna be able to climb some really serious technical uh, terrain wearing this boot. Um, and it's also, in my opinion, just looking at it, it's gonna last a long time. This looks like a really well-made boot, has some really top of the line materials, and is going to last you a good long while. But uh, all those materials and all the burliness of this boot, um, you know, with the stiff uh, shank you have in here, um, that's gonna that's gonna really cost you in terms of weight. Um, but you know, that's that's the sacrifice you make when when you're when you're looking for some really serious climbing. This is a boot you would get to. And then the boot that I ended up taking home or deciding is the Equilibrium. And I chose this boot because it's really the middle ground between these two. It's heavier than the Trango, but it's still relatively lightweight. It has some flexibility, so it's not as stiff as the Scarpa. I'm not going to be able to do, you know, some really technical ice climbing or some really steep climbs in this guy. It may be limited in that regard, but for what I want to do for, for where I'm at in my climbing is uh, this is gonna work perfectly for me it's a good balance between sort of you know there's even another level over here if you really wanted to get extreme but you know below this you have hiking boots so um, I think the equilibrium will allow me to take on some more challenging terrain that I might not necessarily be able to get to with a boot like the Trango it's not going to take me all the way to maybe where I want to go with the Scarpa, but it's going to allow me to, to have some good couple years of fun um, while I'm building my skills and, and figuring things out. So um, can't go wrong with either of these three boots, depending on what you're looking for. Um, but personally, I went the, with the Equilibrium because I think it's like uh, it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You know, ooh, maybe a little too soft, ooh, maybe a little too stiff. And this one is right in the middle. It's, it's just right for me. So that was a quick review, quick rundown. Uh, if you guys have any questions about either of these, about any of these boots, um, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer anything as best as I can. I'm here to help you guys out in your purchasing decisions. So uh, feel free to leave a comment. If you did like this video, if you think it was helpful, do give me a thumbs up just so I can know that people are uh, enjoying this content and that way I can make more. i got plenty of gear in this room beside me that I can grab and, uh, and keep uploading and, and telling you guys what I do and don't like about gear. So appreciate you guys turning in, tuning in and uh, until next time, enjoy.